The bunny. Oh, the bunny here. All right, bunny. Invite. Gotta play against the bunny. The bunnies look, um... The bunnies look harmless, but they do bite. <laughs> Fear the bunny. All right. Fear that bunny. All right, how about I start off with C4? I like this. My, the knights aren't going to be an issue. They're going to be on their natural squares. And uh, what else? Uh, all right, let's follow through here. These guys are just, oh, no wonder why it seems natural. It's You do this and we have a... A regular structure, kind of, or a regular position for most pieces. The bishops, the knights are uh, in a good spot. Um, knight here, or might I want to consider b4 right now? I like b4. Helps my queen get out. And... Should I play my bishop here? I think that's a good thing. My queen has no moves right now, but... <sighs> but what here? Alright, that knight needs to get out of there. Get out of there, knight. Whoa! Actually, knight here threatens a deadly, deadly, deadly fork. Just pawn push here. Or pawn push here. Now I'm going to do this for two things. One, I want to play here and follow up with bishop e2 before there's two pieces trained in this diagonal. If knight b4 was played, I think I would be needing to go with uh, rook c1. Let's get my knight out. Bishop here to follow. And uh, I'll be ready to castle soon here. Hmm. Bishop e2. Alright. Well, I could do this move, and then if knight b3, I could just react. Let's do that. I'm not too afraid of the knight b3 move. It's not, it's not like it's supported with the pawn. So, in fact, um, huh, well, I think this could be a suggestion after the game, because if the knight really wanted to get to this square, it could have done it with tempo. So in the meantime, let me get more development in. Oh, I just tried to castle regular. You have to drop the king on the rook in order to castle. Uh, now what about my queen up? It seems good. Now I'm threatening to get this pawn in two moves. Push, chop. Push, chop is the threat. Okay, capture towards the center unless I have a good reason not to. Do I have a good reason not to? No. In fact, now this could become a problem. The a7 pawn. So I could kick and then transition... To what? I could, I could have my attention turned towards the a7 pawn. Okay. Push now. Another thing I'm looking into is playing d4, d5, and getting a knight to c6. Wait a second. Why would that even be needed? How about I play knight here, threaten this. If the bishop defends, I play here. No, 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 no. Never mind. I don't want to do that. Oh, but wait a second. No, let's not do that either. I was thinking about knight to a2 to b4 to this square, but I'm not so sure about that. Let's see this first. Let's see how black reacts to that. 
If the A pawn moves, then it's the B pawn that I could target next. Maybe even bringing this guy all the way over here. For as long as I keep my, my D pawn on its home square, I retain a lot of flexibility. Maybe D4, maybe D3. If I play D4 right away, these knights can rely upon the E3 square. Okay, this is what we're having. So maybe b6, okay, if I take and the bishop recaptures, that drops material. So let's do this, the knight has to recapture. Okay, this is dropping stuff now. The classic uh, deflection, whenever your pieces are constrained in such a way where they're having to watch over one another, protect one another, you set yourself up for the tactic of deflection. And right now the defending piece is the one that gets is the one that will be uh, getting deflected. Trying to chase away the defender. Deflect away the defender. That's uh, maybe a better way to state it. Because it could be uh, a bit more memorable. Deflect the defender. If you catch your opponent in a defensive position, try and deflect the defender. Right now bishop takes, and then rook takes bishop is right around the corner. Oh, this is uh, a little weird. Huh. Whoa. Oh, okay, I could do this. I was thinking that after knight here, chop, chop, that, um... Wait a second. Oh, okay. Now I have this move available. Let's go with this now. This is a support point. I could have even... No, I couldn't have... Cons no, yeah, I could have considered that. Well, I should have played this move instead of rook to b1. That was too passive. That was silly. I should have considered uh, knight b5 right away. I could rely upon the b5 square as a home. And uh, fortunately, I have this move with the bishop takes rook as a continuation. So let's get over here. This is where you belonged in the first place. And uh, <clears throat> I think knight to d2. Let's do it right now for two reasons. Bishop, knight, fork. Um, notice um, I was able to do this a bit quicker, but I'm not so sure that that move would be played as quick if the queens were still around. Okay, wait a second now. My knight is hit. If I take here, I, this pawn is falling. So do I just defend my knight for one moment? Hmm. Actually, I'm just going to run with this. And give that knight up. I'm going to give this up as well and just go in for this variation where I get this pawn. And then go after the C pawn. I'm sure there was a cleaner approach, but I'm going to hang on to this too. Why not? Rook check is available. This is a little uncomfortable having to... Okay, well, it's not played. If there was a rook check and I had to go to the corner, it's a little bit more work. Just guard the knight. Eventually, coming here is going to be good. This is a nice home on E4, and that was covered. That was a miss. Time, 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 time. Less than a minute. Okay. Good game. Let's uh, hit the rewind. Let's flip the board and let's see where there's uh, an improvement. <clears throat> this seems natural enough, what my opponent is doing with their kingside fiend kettle. You'd see that in a regular chess game. But I am gaining a lot of space on the queen side while black goes for this typical setup. I, I don't know if you should allow me to get in these space gaining moves. I think similar to my c4 move, black should be considering c5. Because you should definitely as black 
be anticipating that white will play b4. Because not only for the bishop fianchetto, but also because just the queen wants to see. And I could see moves like... Uh, could see moves like b4, a4 is a follow-up, all sp gaining space, pressing forward towards my queen side, making, or uh, pressing towards uh, the black queen side, and making life very difficult for the pieces you already have developed. In this case, it was uh, shown in the form of uh, an eventual b5, and your knight has to go elsewhere, and it was uh, flushed away to the edge of the board. So my suggestion, in other words, is to really look into to take into account maybe what it is I will be looking to play, namely this b4 move, maybe you should run with first c5. Not declare your bishop's intentions just yet. Maybe you still want to go here. Maybe you want to come out in this direction. Maybe don't tell white that much information so quickly. I think c5 and then knight here will be a, a big improvement. Um, and you get pushed around a bit. And this becomes awkward, this pawn that deep in uh, your position. So, yeah, this is, this is difficult to defend. This is pretty difficult to defend. I think uh, at the very least you need to be taken with the knight to maintain material. But even so, this is a weak link. And your knight is off sides. So... Yeah, I think that earlier pawn push will, will accomplish a, a good amount there. Look into the c5 advance and then follow up with the knight to c6. Just as you would see in a symmetrical English opening. c4, c5, knight c3, knight c6. Uh, this is a good spot for this knight from this arrangement of pieces. So maybe, uh, maybe that. Anyhow, uh, good game... Uh, Duke Dean.